If you wanna hear about St. Louis, tune in to the Bucket List Show Weekly. Hear what Marissa and Luke say. It drops every Wednesday, got a dope new guest every single week. Buckle up for the ride, who's it gonna be? Who's on the show today? They rep St. Louis. What to do in the loo on a late night, or maybe what to do on a date night? Yeah. Bucket list has you covered, they know what's going on, what's going on, they'll give you, hey, 18 different things to do, or 19 if you need one more to choose, yeah. This city, city, city is a place we call home, a place we call home, yeah. What's up, St. Louis? Welcome back. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of the STL Bucket List Show. I'm your host, Marissa Farrell. And I am your other host, Luke Farrell, um, and we have a very special episode for you today. But before we get into it, um, I got to shout out my guy, Matt, in the back on the ones and twos, cutting up a perfect episode for YouTube, Spotify, Apple, um, Google Pod, every single, All of it. Every single one. Mm-hmm. So, um, And then, all, of course, our friends over at the Regional Arts Commission of St. Louis. The Regional Arts Commission of St. Louis is the largest public funder of arts and art programs in the city of St. Louis. Um, and if you support St. Louis, then... Um, you support art in St. Louis. So uh, without further ado, um, we have a very special guest. Like I said, Marcus Howard is in studio today, um, owner and founder of Greater Health Pharmacy and Wellness. How are you? What's good? <laughs> What's good? I am feeling good. I'm really excited to be here today and yeah. uh, really uh, excited to share more about what we're doing at Greater Health. Uh, we just opened up on November 30th and um, we are off to a really great start and uh, we'll be uh, plunging forward to our grand opening, uh, February 28th. So I want to read a little quick little excerpt from your website and then we'll get into the podcast. Absolutely. But basically Absolutely. On, the, on the top of your website, it says great, greater health is a healthcare destination for everyone. Greater health is a radically inclusive, culturally responsible for cu- culturally responsive pharmacy focused on providing quality patient centered care for all people. We are changing the way culture and pharmacy is being delivered to communities everywhere. That is perfect. That's exactly um, what it says. And that's exactly what we're about. Mm -hmm. And so right on our uh, when you come into our pharmacy on the wall, it says everybody is welcome. And then on the other wall, it says uh, you are a value member of our community. And then on another wall Mm -hmm. is our vision. And our vision is that all people, regardless of difference, can experience greater health and a greater quality of life here in St. Louis. And so Again, that is, you know, again, people tell me that radically inclusive, culture responsive pharmacy is a mouthful and it is. But at the most basic level, we are a pharmacy that welcomes everybody, no matter gender, no matter race, ethnicity, uh, religion, uh, sexual orientation. We are a healthcare destination where whoever you are, you come into greater health, you experience a greater quality of life. That's amazing. Yeah, very inclusive, very supportive to all the walks of life that yep. are going to walk in your door and you're ready. So two months, you said, it's November 30th. It's almost the end of January 30th and yep. you have your grand opening soon. Yep. Um, so we're going to get into that in just a minute, but let's just learn a little bit about you and your background, um, where you grew up, education, all the things you want to tell us just to get to know a little bit more of who you are. Absolutely. So I'm so St. Louis. Uh, I grew up in St. Louis. Uh, I grew up on nor- in the nor- on the north side of St. Louis. Uh, went to St. Louis Public Schools. Uh, shout out to my mom. Shout out to my dad. Shout out to my family. Um, I've always had great support throughout uh, my childhood, um, and I've always been. I, I anywhere I go, I say I am such a product of St. Louis. Whatever the bad, the good, I'm wrapped. I'm that all wrapped in one. And so um, I wouldn't be here if I didn't grow up in St. Louis. If I didn't experience the things that I've experienced. Um, and so, um, I think, uh, I mean, I love St. Louis. It is home. And so I grew up in St. Louis, went to St. Louis public schools. I graduated, uh, and I went out to college in North Carolina, uh, and I wanted to experience something different. Um, and I got a scholarship from the Bill and Melinda Gates foundation. Um, and they were like, Hey, you can go anywhere you want to go. And I was like, well, my favorite basketball team is the, uh, Carolina, UNC Chapel uh, UNC Hill, Chapel Hill yep. Carolina. So I was like, okay, I'll apply to that. And I got in. Um, and I absolutely, you know, love North Carolina. And the thing was, is I was a, uh, I was pre-med, right? So when you smart and, you know, people like, oh, you're going to be a doctor. And I'm like, okay, I'll be a doctor. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, but when I went through, um, college and I actually did an internship and I was actually, um, at here over the summer at BJC at the OBGYN office. And I was there for about two weeks in the hospital and it just dawned on me. I was like, actually, I don't want to be a doctor. Right. I think I want I want to help people. 
I want to be a shining example. I want to help people from underrepresented communities. Um, I want to empower people. I want to support people. And initially you think, oh, you got to be a doctor to do that. Right. Um, and, you know, but at that point I realized I didn't want to be a physician anymore. And so I actually joined Teach for America and became a middle school math and science teacher. Right. Mm -hmm. And so um, that was the it was actually the best job I've ever had. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. It was like they don't pay well, yeah. but it was it, it for me. It didn't matter. I enjoyed the job. I would jump up in the morning. I would get in my car and I would race to school just to be with the students. Just to I mean, I was coaching. I mean, I absolutely loved education. And that's when I realized I'll say, OK, I'm where I'm supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And so I continued to teach for a few years. Um, and it was at that point where I wanted to understand at a larger level what the systemic challenges that students uh, from underrepresented backgrounds were experiencing that resulted in such a disparity in educational outcomes. And so I pursued I went back to North Carolina to pursue my Ph.D. Um, to really understand some of those systemic challenges and in, in, in including uh, how high stress environments impact brain function and brain science. And so I still kind of got back to that science part. Mm -hmm. um, but I but I got to understand from a systemic background and a research and development background, you know, how does, you know, growing up in a high poverty environment, how does that impact the way you learn? How does that impact the way you communicate? And, and, and how does that impact educational outcomes? And so I think it was at that point where I realized that there are systemic challenges that impact people's ability to achieve what I didn't know was that those same challenges also are present in healthcare and impact and impact health health uh, health outcomes and health inequities. Uh, and so, when I was in North Carolina, I had met a guy who actually started his own pharmacy in Charlotte, North Carolina. His his name is Doctor Martez Prince, and he was just telling me, you know, he was telling me about how he started his pharmacy. And what was more impressive was that. Uh, how much of an impact it had on the community, mm -hmm. right? And how much of a, you know, just having, you know, certain services there, certain people who look like them there. Uh, and I was so, I was so energized and so excited about that, about what was happening in Charlotte. I was like, I want to see that in St. Louis. I want to say, I want to see this same excitement, the same, you know, afford, you know, this same space where people can come and feel welcome and valued in the healthcare space. And so I was determined after that to kind of bring that to St. Louis. And so I think that's why I was so excited. So how long, um, how far into your journey at, at college to, and pre-med were you when you had that like, aha, like you said you did the internship. I don't know like how far in like to school when yeah, you started the yeah, internship, yeah. like how, uh, like uh, what, what did that look like? I'll tell you, I, I graduated <laughs> with a science degree. I graduated uh, with Four years a in. yeah with a pre med science degree, um, and it was after I graduated when I chose to become a teacher. And you you can only imagine when your parents are going around, yeah. you know, from St. Louis. Oh, my son's gonna be a doctor. <laughs> my son's gonna be a doctor, and then you say, uh, "Mom, Dad, I'm gonna be a teacher." Yeah, yeah. and it's like a teacher. Well, because what people start seeing there is the dollar sign. Exactly, change. that's exactly it's what like, they see. Great, both are great. <laughs> and gr benefit lots but you of had people. Hopes up. You got their hopes up. Like, I got their hopes up. I got their hopes up. But what they didn't realize was that. You know, I think a lot of people um, forget how how many transferable skills that you develop as a teacher. Yeah, definitely. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, there you develop almost every single skill as a teacher development, uh, performance management, uh, relationship building. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, I mean, is community behavior management, behavior management, right? Mm -hmm. Organization con skills, organization, <laughs> skills. organization the skills, content itself. Yeah. yeah. Being becoming creative, a master right. in that. Yeah. Exactly. You right. got to be creative. You got to think on your feet. You have mm -hmm. to, you know, you have to engage young people. You have to be responsible. And so it's so many transferable skills that I learned as a teacher really after I taught you, I realized I could actually do anything I wanted yeah. to do after teaching because they were, I learned so much as a teacher. And so after that, that that's really what teaching gave me. Um, but yeah, it was, uh, it was after I had graduated when I realized that I didn't want to be a physician. Mm -hmm. And then you were pursuing your PhD, um, and you were doing some research studies. And so like looking at the systemic yep. inequities, that exactly. kind of transfers over to, yep. you know, your 
health what what am i trying to say the health industry i guess right. no absolutely right right absolutely and because what happened was is when I took that research background and I started to go go in St. Louis and kind of research and started talking to people and started reading reports and, and kind of aggregating that research to understand what the overall challenge, like overall picture of health inequities that exist specifically for people of color in St. Louis. And it was such a uh, a disparaging report. And, and you know, I, I wanted to do something about it. And so I think when I saw that, I was able to use those research skills. Mm -hmm. And it's also like research and development skills. Once you research it and you find out what the research says, now let's develop something that responds to that research. So in that um, research, like what, what type of impact um, and outcomes can you get out of improving, you know, the black community or pre people of color? Like, yeah. cause you, you've done the research, you've looked yep. at it. So like now you're at the Del Mar Divine, like what type of impact can you have on that community? Yeah, no, I think, um, and I think no one, um, no one solution works. It, and, and again, going and pursuing and understanding through research, it's a systemic, there's systemic challenges, right, that exist in the community. And so there have to be systemic solutions. Mm -hmm. And so greater health is just one of the components or one of the elements that has to be part of the solution. And so that's another thing that we realized too, was that, you know, we're not an end all be all solution, but what we are is part of the solution. Right. And so when we came in, we wanted to talk to one of the one of the approaches was radical collaboration. Right. And so what that means is, is that we came in and we wanted to talk to the people who are already doing the work in the community. Right. There there are a lot of organizations who are doing the work and we didn't want to come in saying like, oh, we know what's best. Right. And it's like, no, let's learn from the people who are already doing the work mm -hmm. and let's find where the gaps are and let's fill those gaps and work with the rest of the organizations. And so that is how you help any community is, is, is finding systemic solutions to systemic challenges. So what were some of, just to shed light for listeners, um, what were some of the challenges that you were seeing? Like in terms of your research, like, I don't know, just give a couple of things that you yeah. were really seeing, like were big challenges, big issues. Yeah. One of the big issues was just a trust gap, mm. right? In the community uh, with communities of color and healthcare and reasonably so historically, uh, marginalized uh, communities have experienced healthcare inequities um, that were both intentional and unintentional. Um, and so there is that trust, there is that gap of trust that exists rightfully so. And so understanding that that is the first thing that you have to address is how do we build trust and how do we not then take advantage of that? Right. And how do we not build trust and then do something totally different than what we promise It's how do we build trust, keep our promise and really focus on solving the challenges that exist. And so that's kind of, um, that's kind of what we've, you know, that's kind of what we believe, you know, kind yeah. of used as a guide yeah. to, to our work. Definitely, yeah. That's inspiring. So, you know, entrepreneurship's like really exciting for me. I love to like learn about it. I love to talk to people that are in it. And, uh, you know, you went through college and, yeah. you know, you went through all these things of yep. like, I'm going to be, you know, this blue collar worker. And now yeah. you're an, like, yeah. we just talked earlier off record. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. you know, you're an entrepreneur now. So yep. like, did you ever like, have that in your mind when you were going through school that you wanted to own your own business or did this just come up because of like your path um like just tell us about how that became and like because that's another shift like you're, yep. you're 30 years old and you've had all these different shifts in your yep. life so like tell us yeah. about that entrepreneurship now i appreciate that question mm -hmm. and that and that's a very good question and and no um i've had <laughs> entrepreneurs in my life like my dad was an entrepreneur uh but and maybe that did have an impact on you know on me owning my own business but when i was in college i didn't want to own my own business right I didn't, I had no, um, I had no, I had no intentions on becoming an entrepreneur. It's not something I was like, oh, I want to be a business owner, entrepreneur. But when I got into the work, what I did realize it was like, I'm a person who needs to lead the work, right? When I, you know, if I work for an organization or I work for a school, I'm like, I need to be one of those people who lead it, right? I care. I actually am genuine. I care about the people. I have the skills to do it. I should be one of the people who are, who is leading the work. And it's just one of those things is when you're called, you have a responsibility. And I felt like I was one of those people who have a responsibility. Um, and so once I, um, once I saw, it's just like, you know, nobody else is doing it. So I want to try to do it. Right. And so it wasn't necessarily like, I want to be an entrepreneur, but um, I wanted to do what was necessary to help the, uh, to be one of the, part of the solution in the community. And so, right. you know, and then one of those roles is becoming an entrepreneur and, 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 and filling that gap. Right. And I think it's just, you know, I just fell into that. Were you fearful to get started? 
I actually wasn't. You know, the, I think the thing is I really wasn't that afraid. Right. And I think that's what helped me get to where I am now or where the organization is now is I just wasn't I just didn't care about failing. Right. I think I, you know, I never, you know, again, I think it went to, you know, I didn't, you know, when I didn't become a doctor, I didn't think of it as, oh, I'm a failure in your life. It's like, yo, I've actually found my passion in teaching. And so I think that experience really helped me understand like what failure was. And so I was never, you know, when I said I wanted to do this, I was like, this is going to be fun. There's going to be sacrifices, but you know, failing is just a part of learning. And I think, and I think our, the future generation of the community, they, they, um, I think I have a, a, uh, a responsibility to try, mm -hmm. even if I do fail. Right. It's like, you know, I don't even think about failing. All I think about is there are people who need help. I need to help them. If I do fail, hopefully then somebody else picks it up yeah. and keeps it going. But I, at least I planted the seed. Right. Mm -hmm. And then, and that's on the, that's on the, that's on the low end, but on the high end, this is super successful. This is all over the state. This is people get the, the support they need. And so that's really what I think about. I don't necessarily think about failing. I mean, of course, you know, I think they say something like nine or 10 businesses fail, um, and that's okay, but I think really? that doesn't, that doesn't stop you from trying. Right. And for me, you know, I read a book, I think it was, uh, I think it was a book by Robert Kiyosaki. I think it was a uh, rich dad, poor dad. And I think he said something about failing forward. Yeah. Right. Really and cool. it's like, you're not trying if you're not failing. Right. And it's like, you know, some people feel like failure is a bad thing. And it's like, no, failure is a good thing. It means you're trying. It means you're pushing limits. It means, it means, and even if you fail, somebody in the future will take that idea and take it to a level that you never even knew that was expected. But you put that idea in the universe and you show people, mm -hmm. hey, this was, there's a need. You went out and you tried. Um, and so, and in that book, um, you know, the rich dad and the poor dad, yep. the poor dad was his dad yep. and the exactly. rich dad was like the guy down the street or yeah, something. Yeah, exactly. But like the, the, the poor dad was like a stable teacher, yep. but he was always yep. paycheck to paycheck. <laughs> exactly. And that's actually failing in the long, like not like that career, but like his dad was a paycheck to paycheck. Yep. Every time you get a raise, you spend more. So exactly. as an entrepreneur, exactly. it's like sometimes exactly. we're not spending on ourselves for years. Like yeah. it's been yeah. like two or three years before yeah. I've ever like really bought myself stuff. Exactly. Because you're like, you're like, you feel bad. You're like, why am I, I don't deserve that yet. Yep. Um, and like, you probably have a goal in your mind of like, okay, when I get to this point, then yep. we can start doing things that we want to do. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I want to learn a little bit more about um, Maxine. So we had Maxine on the show probably like three or four months ago. Yeah. Um, this past summer. She came on the show. Um, she showed us around mm -hmm. um, the space. So like, tell us about that relationship and, and really how she helped kind of bring your vision to life. And yeah. Maxine was probably uh, one of the best things that ever happened to me as I was going on this journey. Right. Um, I actually, I, I started to go fund because I didn't know when I, when I came, when I came with this idea, I didn't even know where to start. Yeah. I was like, what are the steps? Well, yeah. I was going to say, we can start with the steps. Yeah. And going no, and yeah. And, 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 and definitely, and I, and I can go in chronological order. So really when I came with this idea, I was like, okay. And I asked my friend who Dr. Martez Prince in Charlotte, I was like, how much does something like this cost? 600 mm -hmm. K. Right. To just even think, you know, it's just, you know, almost a million dollars is what you need to, to get it started. And so I'm like, OK, how do I raise a million dollars? I have no idea. Yeah. So the first thing that I know is GoFundMe. Mm -hmm. Right. It's like, OK, what kind of traction will I get if I start a GoFundMe page? So I started a GoFundMe page and I told my, the GoFundMe page what the what the um, what the goal was. And I raised eight thousand dollars out of six hundred thousand dollars. Mm -hmm. All right. Eight thousand, eight thousand dollars. Right. So the goal did not. And we go back to that failure thing. Right. It's like other people would be like, you failed. You didn't you hit started your, with zero. Yeah. You didn't hit your goal. Right. But mm -hmm. then when I saw I was like, there's something here. If I can raise eight thousand dollars from about 200 donors, that means that people want this. That means that people are, you know, because people just don't give their money, you know, away to things. Right. And so I knew there was something there. And so what happened was this Maxine Clark, she actually saw the GoFundMe page and she reached out. She was like, I'm building the Del Mar Divine. It, would you be interested? Do you have a location for the pharmacy? I'm like, no, it's just an idea right now. I would, I would love a location at the Del Mar Divine. And then right. as soon as I say yes, she literally became my mentor and business advisor every step of the way until even now. Right. And so she has been an old, she's been absolutely uh, a gym in working with me. I mean, she just, took, and it's like, 
not that she's building this whole Delmar Divine and she has time to to help me through this process, but it's it's just like she helped me through the entire process. She made sure I had the resources that I needed. And I think most importantly, she believed in me mm-hmm. when a lot of people didn't. Right. Right. And I was just like, and I think that is even more like, even if you can't help, even just saying like, hey, I love that idea. Keep going. Mm-hmm. Right. I love that idea. Do you need anything? Mm-hmm. That is to an entrepreneur. That's like one of the, the biggest things you can do. Hey, I love what you do. Right. Just 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 some encouragement. And she was more than encouragement. She, you know, she took me under her wing. She mentored me. And so it, it, it was a great, you know, and I and that was something that I needed because, you know, then it was just like, well, somebody like Maxine Clark believes in this and believes in me that I can't stop. Yeah. Right. And so even when I went to raising the money. So what happened was, is I used the eight thousand dollars to hire a consulting company. Uh, it was like a company is called Independent RX Consulting, where they helped me. Um, they actually specialize in startup pharmacies. And I realized like there's a consultant for everything. Right. <laughs> right. And so when I realized there's a consultant to help you start up a pharmacy, I reached out to them and they were, and they were like, I was like, what's the down payment for you all to start helping me? $5,000. Well, I'm like, okay. I got well, it. there you go. Right. <laughs> and so I realized, well, that failure of not reaching the goal, that $8,000 then helped me, you know, was a step for something it, else. Exactly. To help me get the, uh, the consulting team. And then once the consulting team helped me, built the financial models, built the proposals. Then I had everything that I needed to then start going and reaching out to people, to investors, uh, to, to then eventually reaching the investor that really helped me get this started. Amazing. Wow. Just to yeah, journey. Maxine is like a fairy godmother. And this, but like in a, in a obviously realistic sense of like, yep. she is very passionate about helping people who are doing good things. Absolutely. And so that says, that speaks volumes for what you're trying to do. Is Absolutely. She, she doesn't just like, you know, you know, she doesn't have her hand in a bunch of random cookie jars yep. that are not yeah. meaningful. Like she believes she really in the people. And teachers, she, too. Yeah. Oh, she's. Remember when she was like saying she, that she was on the wish list and she was just buying everybody teacher supplies? <laughs> like she would just go down a line. Yeah, and she's just like buy whatever you need, supplies. you know, because yeah. she and like she truly was like one of the first people I think I've ever heard say thank you, like just thank you for being a teacher. And yeah. I would, thought that was just great, like crazy. Yep. I'd never heard anyone say that. Exactly. Um, and she's like, no, it's it's the most important work. Yeah. Everything that people are and do is because there was a teacher that got them there. And I'm like, hundred percent. So yeah, she's phenomenal. And it's amazing that she fully supports you and oh, has given you all these resources. And yeah. now you're climbing the ladder and have great things coming. Absolutely. So, yeah, absolutely. So, you know, shortly after that, you know, I read in the article with the business journal that you got connected with, um, the Missouri Foundation of Health. Yeah. So just tell us about that relationship with them and, and just kind of go into that. Yeah. So what happened was, is that, you know, I compiled a list of, uh, you know, with raising money. There is no blueprint. Mm-hmm. It is literally get out and talk to people. Mm-hmm. Right. And so I compiled a list of like 80 or 90 people. And the CEO of the Missouri Foundation for Health was like the 81st person. Right. And so like almost 80 people said, no, mm-hmm. bad idea. It's not going to work. Do you know, have you ever heard of CVS? Have you ever heard of Walgreens? Is that what their main concern was? Like for saying no, is they felt like competition? Yeah, was- right. It's like, how are you, you're not a pharmacist. How are you going to build a business that works, right? And so I think, um, and a lot of people just didn't see the vision. And so I, you know, in one of the 81st peop- uh, person was uh, a the the president of the, uh, I think it was the uh, the former CEO of the Missouri Foundation Foundation for Health. I pitched it to them um, and they liked it. They were like, we believe in that vision. We actually, you know, we actually believe in what you're doing. And they also knew the need as well. I think that was a big, I think that was a really big differentiator. They were actually, they actually did, they they had a compiled of a lot of research and, and a lot of reports that existed. And so they understood the problem that I was trying to solve and they knew that the possibility of this solution could actually have a really uh, positive impact on the health inequities that exist in St. Louis. So I think they understood the systemic challenges in a way where they when they saw what we were trying to do, they were like, hey, this actually might work. And so um, the team out at the, with the Missouri Financial Health has been amazing and they have been our uh, primary supporter financially. Uh, with uh, with funding the project um, and uh, really supporting us in a way, really great terms and really giving me the flexibility as an entrepreneur to, um, you know, just the, the, the pressure of 
immediate success is 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 not is non-existent. They're flexible with me. They understand the um the 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 disadvantages of being an entrepreneur, a new entrepreneur. They've given me flexible terms. And so it's just a there's just an understanding of, hey, we understand where you are, we understand the problem, we are here with you. Yeah. And I think having a investor and a funder that that understands that process is just you can't, you know, there's nothing like it. Um, and so, um, and so I, you know, I work with them hand in hand, um, and, and we're on the line, not just for, uh, financial outcomes, but we're on the line and which is what I really like, we're on the hook for providing impact, right? So they, they yeah, they want to know if we can, you know, how, you know, what the financials look like, but they want to know how are you actually doing what you said you were going to do? How is this radically inclusive culture response of pharmacy? improving health outcomes and we have to prove that right and so that's what we're really excited about because not only do we have to prove you know f- you know that we're sustainable as a business but we also have we're also on the hook for outcomes so that's that's one of the things that I feel like now you know we can really you know be who we say we're going to be and really focus on outcomes nice. wow and what day, um, what's the grand opening date? February 28th All is right. our grand opening, and it's a celebration. It is a celebration of a long, long road, mm-hmm. but an exciting road, right? It's, it should be exciting for the community. Um, it's exciting for St. Louis um, that they get to be, um, they get to be a part of something special. You know, there's a lot of, you know, when I travel, there's a lot of things said about St. Louis, about, you know, some of the things that happen or St. Louis being dangerous. Um, but there are great things about St. Louis that exist. And, you know, and and I want this to be part of that conversation where, oh, did you know St. Louis has a black owned pharmacy? Right. That's owned by somebody who grew up from St. Louis, went through the public, you know, went to public schools and, you know, and is and is doing that. It's from, you know, the city of St. Louis and and who grew up, you know, and so it, I think um, I think it's exciting. And I think um, it's something that uh, the grand open is definitely going to be a celebration. You know, we got uh, we got the mayor confirmed. Um, the mayor of St. Louis is is, is going to attend. And, um, you know, a lot of uh, healthcare stakeholders are going to attend. And I think it's just a lot of excitement around yeah. something positive, mm-hmm. something positive that is actually focused on helping the community. And I think it'll be something special and I'm really excited just to showcase us to the community. Yeah. I'm really excited about Tell that. Tell us a little bit more about the event and like kind of what the goal is. Cause um, I know that you have a goal set right now of, mm-hmm. of reaching a hundred thousand or not a hundred thousand, a thousand <laughs> new, yeah. new subscriptions to yep. switch over to you. So yeah. give us some info on like how, how, how people can do that. And then yep. give us some info about what to expect at the event. No, I appreciate that. And so, yeah, so our goal is uh, so 1000 patients, a part of our greater health one K family, so we have a campaign going. Um, it is to be a part of the Greater Health 1K family. And that is a thousand residents in St. Louis transferring their prescriptions over to us um, and really experiencing that greater health and a greater quality of life. And so we do have a plan to to open up six more pharmacies uh, by 2027. Um, but this particular pharmacy, uh, we say, you know, come be a part of history because this will be the first one, mm-hmm. right? This is the first radically inclusive culture ref- response of pharmacy in the United States. And it started right here in St. Louis. So be a part of the first one, right? Yeah. Because it is going to scale. Um, but we can only, we can only have 1000 patients right now. That, that is what, that is what the, um, that is what the capacity is so that we don't, you know, we don't over, uh, we don't, we can provide that quality care. Right. right? right. And so, you know, people are transferring, you know, once they hear about us, they're transferring pretty quickly. And if you go on Google, if you go on Google reviews, yeah. uh, we have about 25 reviews. They're all five star reviews. I noticed that. I right. That all five yeah. star reviews. And, and, and they're good ones too. Oh yeah, yeah. They're good ones. And hopefully it doesn't change by the time this interview comes out. Yeah, It's next week. Yeah, you, yeah. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> yeah. But it shows that, yo, people, we are really providing that the care that people are asking for. We're delivering on our promise. And it's not just coming from me. Mm-hmm. It's coming from the people. Mm-hmm. And that's re- and that's something that's really exciting, right? You know, if you you know you you know again, you go on those Google reviews, it's like wow, it's all five star reviews. And so, um, do people it, have to live like really close to be a part no, of that? Or no, they just have to be a St. Louis city resident. Yeah, they just yeah, they just have to really be in St. Louis. I mean, really, uh, we'll be delivering to St. Louis city and St. Louis county. Mm-hmm. Um, it's we do ground delivery. Oh, we wow. do uh, we do mail order. 
Um, and so, no, you don't necessarily. And there's free delivery. Okay. Right. And so one of the things that we learned um, as we did our research was that, yo, people have a hard time getting to the pharmacy to get their medication, access. but they really need it. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. It's access. Mm-hmm. And one of those things that we have to do is break down those barriers. And so th- it's a transportation barrier. And so one of those. And so in order to break it down, we, we know we have to handle uh, transportation. And so we do we provide uh, free delivery. Very and nice. so. And yeah, absolutely. That's and so. Great. Yeah. So what else is sets you apart from the basic Walgreens? Walgreens. <laughs> yeah, no, no. I think is that a bad word? Uh, I no. know. Yeah. Like that's why I was like, He's I don't like, want to yeah. say it, He's but like, yeah. So we don't we don't mention that name around the pharmacy. Um, no, in all honestly, you know, the thing is, is that we're not necessarily, you know, I think most people don't understand. It's like we're not necessarily competing with anybody, to yeah. be honest. Right there. I mean, there, there's a lot of those major chains on every corner and there's still health inequities that exist. And so which means that, you know, some people are getting service and some people are not. And we're just here to fill those gaps of the people who are not necessarily getting those uh, those gaps, whether it's those uh, people who identify as trans who are not necessarily getting that experience they need whether that's an African-American person who doesn't feel seen or valued in the community, if they, even if that's a woman who comes in and, and, and they don't necessarily have the services or the health screenings, um, you know, for them is, 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 is for the people who feel like, you know, they don't have a space to go to in healthcare. That's what greater health is. It's a space that anybody can go to and feel welcome and valued. It's wonderful what you're doing and it's going to be so successful and the grand opening is going to be so Thank exciting. Thank you so much. Thank and you so much. Thank yeah, you so we'll much. We'll is it just sure. uh, like anyone Absolutely. can go? Like it's not, you know, you don't have to like, uh, RSVP. RSVP. You want people to RSVP. Correct? Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So there will be a, there will be a save the day RSVP okay. that comes out. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, because there'll be two parts to the grand opening. There will be uh, a small, short, uh, program, um, and then there will be, you know, ribbon cutting and then coming into the pharmacy and just checking it out. Right. Um, but yeah, we, we want uh, people to come experience it and transferring their prescriptions over. Yeah. Um, and so that's, you know, kind of in order to support us, uh, what we're looking for is, hey, transfer our prescriptions over. We, you know, we uh, we we take uh, most major insurances. Mm-hmm. Um, and so if that's the Medicare, the Medicaid, the Express Scripts, the United Healthcare, the Humana's, mm-hmm. uh, the, um, the Edna, the Blue Cross Blue Shields, um, we, we do take all major insurances. And so, um, yeah, we just, you know, we, we, we definitely want to serve the community in a way that uh, they deserve to be served. And so that's what we're excited about. We're excited to get people to come to us, transfer their prescriptions over and just experience that greater health experience. Tell us a little bit about your team. Um, I got to meet a few, um, a few of your team members mm-hmm. when I when I stopped by there. But like, what what type of process? Because like you've managed teams before with your mm-hmm. other jobs, but like yeah. now this is your thing, and you have to bring in you know the right type of people. So yeah. tell us a little bit about the team and yeah, and no, the team. team. You know, the team is wonderful, and so you know what I'm excited about about the team is that uh, it's a diverse team, mm-hmm. and why that's so important is that they're a diverse group of people who are going to come into the pharmacy. And so our team has to be prepared uh, to be open to the diversity that comes into the pharmacy, Mm -hmm. uh, but also um, excited and willing to support the people who come into the pharmacy. And so what what what, what impressed me about the team is that um, they have really done an amazing job in making everybody feel welcome and valued. I mean, they really have um, really um, walked, you know, basically walked the walk and and talked to talk. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, you say, hey, we're about this. But then they've uh, they've actually provided the type of care to the people who walk through the door. And so that's what I'm most impressed about my team. I mean, your mm-hmm. team is everything. Yeah. Right. You can't do it without a great team. And so I definitely think, you know, that my team is top notch. And they've you know, they have really and it, one of the reasons why we were able to open and, 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 and be so successful uh, really early on is because of, uh, of a great team. I love that you said like. They don't just talk the talk, they walk the walk. Cause like even like circling back to education, like I remember interviewing for my district and it was like, it's just so important that like, you're not just saying the right things. Like you are representing that school district. You are, you know, you are a reflection of that. And so just making sure like even outside of the business that like those values are still important to you, that's how that carries over into your job. And that's why it's such a welcoming atmosphere, I'm sure. 
Absolutely, one hundred percent. I think I think you make a great point. I think maybe even comes from being in education. In education, you just can't talk to talk and not walk to walk because people's lives are on the line. The future of you know the country or the world is on the line, and, and they depend on you. And so I think it's very similar in healthcare. It's like people's lives are on the line. You, I can't just put a vision that everybody's welcome. Or, you know, every, you know, you know, it's not just a sticker on the wall. Exactly. It's just not the sticker on the wall. Like we, you know, we're excited to actually provide that care. And so that's what, yeah, again, back to the team. I think that I think, you know, we hire people who believe in that vision and who um, who actually uh, implement that vision uh, with fidelity. Yeah, that's that's inspiring. So community partnerships are important, you know, obviously the Missouri Foundation of Health, but you did, you do have another partnership with SSM. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. You know, SSM, uh, was really, uh, was, was, was a, uh, was a organization that I reached out early on where, um, I reached out and said, Hey, um, I have this vision where I'm trying to create a radically inclusive, culture responsive environment for St. Louis. And this is the neighborhood and this is the area in which I'm trying to do it in. And, you know, and I reached out to a lot of people and SSM was one of the first organizations that saw the vision. It was like, yo, we believe in that um, and we're about that and we want to help you do it. And so, you know, I definitely, you know, I told them about the vision of it being a healthcare destination. And they were like, well, you know, what we what we would be willing to do is to put a, 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 a SSM Health Express Clinic inside the pharmacy um, so that when people come in, they not only are able to get the services for the pharmacy, but they also get the services from the express clinic. Mm -hmm. So to this day, so greater health pharmacy and wellness, um, we do have that wellness component where somebody can come in, they can walk in or schedule an appointment and and talk to a nurse practitioner who can prescribe medication um, or talk to a physician's assistant or a medical assistant. And they're on staff, um, the same time of our, the same hours of operation as us. And so that was a huge partnership where, um, you know, just, it was just so amazing to hear that there was an organization uh, that believed in the vision when it was just an idea. You got to understand, I was just a guy who said on a piece of paper, this is what I wanted to do. And they said, yeah, we love this and we're down to do it as well. And so um, SSM has, and it's been a really great partnership. Mm -hmm. And so we've heard some reviews and and people were like, Hey, it's so convenient to go in, go to express clinic, get checked out and then walk right over to the pharmacy, uh, get the medications and be able to leave. And I don't have to worry about, you know, going to another place. Um, there's continuity of care, scheduling, exactly. Scheduling time to even get into it. Exactly. Right. And so, you know, you know, they, you know, they finish with doing what they're doing. They send their prescriptions over to us. We handle it. And that person has now had a really great experience. And, um, and that's what we're trying to, you know, and like, as you said earlier, our goal is for greater health to be a healthcare destination for everyone. Right. And in order to be a healthcare destination, you have to have, you know, a, a variety of services. And so, Shout out to SSM, um, and yeah, that's you know, great. and Amazing. thank you for the partnership. Is that going to be a, a multiple? That's going to be scaled out to the other locations. That's what we hope. Yeah. That's you know, that's what we're hoping. Again, Expe- we, in Missouri, yeah, Missouri. exactly. That's what we're hoping. You know, we definitely hope that as we scale, they um, they decide to partner with us and continue uh, the partnership as we scale. Absolutely, yeah, I hope so. That's amazing. Um, so, how important is it to be rooted in the Delmar Divine community? Yeah, you know, Delmar Divine uh, is has been a wonderful community. You know, the thing I think they have the same vision as uh, Greater Hell, right? The vision is to support people who have necessarily not been supported historically, um, and you know, and the I think the point of the Delmar Divine is to bridge this Delmar Divide gap. You know, historically there has been a gap there on one side. There is one group of people on another side. There's another group of people. Um, and it's literally a, a street that divides it, right? Um, and so I think the point of the Delmar Divine is bring all of these resources together so that everybody experiences support financially, um, you know, medically, uh, you know, educationally, you know. And so I think that's the, you know, and so being in, in, inside a building um, and working with organizations with the same mission and vision, I think is very important. I think the Delmar Divine has been a, Maxine and the Delmar Divine has been has done a really good job of uh, finding the organizations and 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 having us collaborate 
to really uh, enact, you know, to really see a vision into fruition, right? Everybody deserves support. Everybody deserves a, a, a certain quality of life. Um, and you put a group of people together who believe in that vision and we're working toward that vision. Well, that's um, just very well said. So, yeah, you're uh, very, I mean, you're, you exude passion and yeah. it's, it's, I bet now your mom's saying, my son owns a radically inclusive, culturally responsive pharmacy. I bet that's yeah. what they're saying now. Yeah, and, 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 you know, and, and my, and my family has been very supportive. You know, it is funny because it's like, you know, my family is like, uh, my son's going to be a doctor and I'm like, I'm going to be a teacher. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, my son's going to do this. And then I'm like, actually, I'm going to do this. <laughs> and so, you know, and so it's, my family has actually been very supportive, especially my mom and dad and my uncles and uh, grandparents and cousins have all been supportive of just whatever Marcus, you know, says he's going to do, we're going to support him. Mm -hmm. And they don't give me, they don't, why are you doing that? And what, why are you doing this now? And they don't, I don't get those questions. It's just like, okay, what help do you need from me? Yeah. Right. And so that's what I really appreciate uh, for my family. Yeah, shout, shout out your family. And I'm, I'm sure they're going to be listening. Yeah, listening yeah, this, yeah, so. yeah, definitely. Uh, shout definitely. out to them. But, you know, the STL Bucket List show, you know, our our mission, um, just to give you a little background, is to support the people, places, and events yep. and things that make St. Louis special. Absolutely. Um, so in doing that, you know, this year we made a goal to, like, support more things outside of restaurants and events yeah. and food. There's, there's, mm. We know that there's cool stuff to do in St. Louis, but now we're trying to kind of broaden that. Yeah, um, and the to, people who are doing different things and you're doing something different we're excited to highlight that for sure people um, need to know and but the stl bucket list mm. show was built on yeah. places to do you <laughs> yeah. know places to go yeah. things to eat so yeah. tell us like let's say you know one of your friends comes in town to come come hang out with you like what are a few spots that you're going what are what's some food you're eating that's a, that's a good that's that's a very good question <laughs> the first thing that i uh that i take my uh friends to is emo's pizza okay you gotta it's the stl uh staple. yeah <laughs> it's an stl staple when uh and so you know, it's pizza that, you know, you really can't get anywhere else. Mm -hmm. And so that's just something uh, that I take people to. I also take people to um, the Broadway Oyster Bar. Yeah. Uh, that restaurant is so good. And so <laughs> the thing is, is though, I don't really eat a lot of sweets. Mm -hmm. And my favorite dessert is uh, bana uh, banana bread pudding. Yeah. And the thing is, is like, I've only had it for my grandmother and I only eat it because my grandma made it and it was so good. Um, and I've never really eaten it at a restaurant, but when I went to the Broadway Oyster Bar, I had their bread pudding and it is so good. <laughs> it is so good. Right. And so I don't. Seafood I don't, too, though? You like seafood? Oh, man. And the seafood. So you do the seafood and then you top it off. With absolutely. Bread absolutely. Ooh, absolutely. You better work out after that. Oh, meal. man. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. That's a high calorie <laughs> meal. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. That's yep. a good spot. They got yep. live music usually. Always. Exactly. Yes, live it's music. It, it's a good it's vibe. Really cool. Good food yeah. for sure. And then, yeah. And then I also take them to Prime 55, uh, which is a black owned steakhouse. And mm -hmm. so again, like, you know, I understand how important it is uh, to support black owned businesses because it's so difficult uh, because of the lack of resources and things like that. And so uh, uh, Prime 55 is another restaurant where yeah. the steak is good. The stuffed salmon is good. The vibes the, are good. Yeah, the vibes are good. It's I a mean, nice spot. Yeah, nice like spot. they got yeah, two locations. In yeah, yep, yep. They got a location right by us and then they have a location in downtown St. Louis. And so those are the really the two spots where it's like, yo, you got to go to these two spots. Yeah. Um. Uh. When I go, and then you gotta go to Emos. Um. Because Emos piece is like the do you best. Have pizza. Any, do you have any like hobbies in your time off? Like, do you do like you go to the park? You go to you pl like play sports or work out or anything like that? Yeah. So I go actually downtown to like Genesis. Uh. Yeah. Yeah. Genesis. Right by your office. Yeah. 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 Right by the ballpark. Yeah. Yep. Genesis. Yeah. So I go to work out. Well, you go all the way down there to work. Yeah, I it's, do. That's I a good do. gym though. Because I think I started out there. Like yeah. I started a couple years out there when I lived downtown. Yeah. When it was one life. It was. Yeah. When life. it was one life. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. yeah it was one life. And so like the trainers were really dope. Um, and, uh, and I started working out there and I kind of just stayed there. And so that's kind of where I go, uh, to kind of work out. And then, um, what I like to do, I like to go to movies. I like to go out, uh, and watch movies. I like to go to the arch. Um, I think one of the bucket list things, I got to go to the top of the arch. Okay. I do want to yeah. do that. I do want to do that. I haven't to. done it. Yeah. And I'm the, I'm yeah. like Mr. Bucket either. List and I've never done it. So well, maybe we'll go never, up there. Never, well, let's, go have, he has let's go up there together. Yeah, we'll, make yeah. we'll make a video. We'll make a video. You can stay down and <laughs> make a video of us as we go. Up. I'll record you guys when you get back. What'd you think? I'm like, <laughs> it's too high. It's like yeah. not, it's, it's just it's, a little tram ride up and then you just. I heard it's tight in there. Um, 
I, yeah. I don't know. We'll see. We'll no, go. but we'll go. like, that is like one right. thing. That, like when you live right. here your whole life, you don't think of it as exactly, that. Exactly. But when exactly. people come in town, like they're like, let's go to the yeah. arts, let's go yeah. open it. And you're like, what? I never yeah, even thought ex- about that. Exactly. And that's actually, you has take some, that stuff for granted. Yeah, so. you do. And yeah. you only, like you said, you only know when your friends come in town, it's like, oh, have you been up there? I'm like, no, I actually haven't. And I got to yeah. do that. Yeah. Um, is, do you, are there like, do you like get to see out as you go up or is it just, no. oh, you don't. Ooh, no. well, that's good then. That's, and there's a whole like little like, tiny like airplane holes at the you're top. You're closed right? in. Okay. And then it's not even a there's far a right up. Yeah. I mean, you don't feel like you're like curved, like at a curve. Yeah. You just oh, go wow. up and <laughs> yeah. you get to the top and there's all the windows and you can look out and it's a beautiful it's a view. view. That's, and then really you cool. ride it back down and you can't see anything on the way that's back That's cool. Down. Yeah. So, so yeah. It'll be all right. Yeah, so St. That, Louis has some gems like that. Like the zoo is free. The zoo is always cool to go do. Parks, Forest Park. And so you know what? That was actually one of the things I was thinking about too on my bucket list was actually go. Because like when you grow up mm-hmm. um, and the things that you went to as a child, like you don't necessarily get to appreciate the experience. And so I was like, one of the things on my bucket list is all the things that I did when I was in, in elementary school. Yeah. I think it was like apple picking. It was yeah. going to the zoo. Mm-hmm. It's like, as you know, I actually want to go there as an adult and experience those things over over to like mm-hmm. really appreciate right. like what I was experiencing. Like, so yeah, the St. Louis Zoo, because then when you grow up, you realize like, yo, St. Louis Zoo is one of the best zoos in the country. So and good. I didn't even realize that. Yeah. I'm like, yo, I need to go back to the zoo and appreciate <laughs> and that. And it's free. And it's like, free. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yep. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah, so those are, I would say that's definitely uh, on my STL book list. I don't know, does St. Louis have somewhere where you do uh, skydiving? Does St. Louis do any skydiving? I, I, in a, I don't I think know. like Belleville does. Like Belleville does? On the Illinois side, because you need a lot more space. Okay. Yeah. You, need like a lot, you need like some cornfields. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you can't be doing that in the city. Yeah. You'll, you'll land it. You'll land it. Yeah. yeah I'm look, I think that's on my bucket list. I think I gotta, I gotta, I gotta jump out on a plane. Well, once yeah. you hit a thousand, so once you, once you hit a thousand on hey February now. 28th, then you go skydiving. You know what? I'm down for that. <laughs> and then we'll take a video of it. <laughs> once we get our thousandth patient at Greater Health, you'll the, go live. You'll like, the, I'm the, going live. As the owner like will this. jump out of a plane and skydive. That's yep. really I'm, cool. I'm, I'm, down yes. I'm down for that. 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 So I'm going to read, I'm going to read one more thing and then we can wrap up and you can kind of tell people yeah. more how to support you. So this was Absolutely. a I think this was a quote from the business journal. Yep. Um, it was at the bottom of their article, but it, but it basically said in quotations, it said, this is a critical development as communities of color around the U S need healthcare providers that off, offer both quality care and a deeper understanding of their culture. Greater health has the potential to become a trusted source of healthcare for these communities and help alleviate challenges that prevent better outcomes. And that was, that's it. And well, it was said. well said. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Drop the mic. Yeah. <laughs> That, uh, well said. But yeah, thank you again for coming on yeah, um, and, so and taking time. I know this was a media day for you. Um, and as you lead up to the to grand opening, you're probably going to be on the news and yep. doing all this awesome stuff. The mayor is going to be coming down there. Absolutely. Um, so just tell people where they can find you. Um, tell them your website, your social media is where they can support. Um, and uh, yeah. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. So greaterhealthpharmacyandwellness.com is our website. That On the website, everything from our services to transferring your prescriptions to scheduling an SSM Express Clinic uh, wellness visit is on the website. Uh, we are also on IG um, at, at Greater Health Pharmacy. Um, and we're also on Facebook as Greater Health Pharmacy and Wellness. And so Greater Health is also one word. Okay. Um, and um, yeah, uh, we were really excited. And we, you know, how do you transfer your prescriptions over to us and, and join the Greater Health family? You can actually go online and fill out a form, which literally takes literally like one minute we ask what your name is, what your uh, date of birth is, and where your uh, what your pharmacy is, mm-hmm. and where your prescriptions are now, and then we take care of the rest. And so it's a very easy process. Once you give us that information, we handle the rest and transfer your prescriptions over to us. Um, and so, yeah, it's just going online. You can also call us at 314-200-5313, and you can talk to one of our pharmacists, and literally our pharmacists will take down that information uh, and transfer that information over, and we will get those uh, we will get those th- uh, things transferred. And so it's an extremely easy process, effortless, um, and, uh, yeah, we just really excited. We really want people to experience the greater health experience because, um, you know, healthcare is all about how you feel, right? When you feel good, you work good, you learn good. And so, um, you know, we just want everybody to experience that. Um, and so that's why we're looking, that's why we're, uh, right now it's the, the greater health one K family. We want a thousand of St. Louis residents to be a part of that. Um, so we can work together to change healthcare. Yeah. Um, 
we'll uh, we'll drop all the links for that. We're going to be at the grand opening, so we'll do some videos there. But um, really, you know, like Marcus said, go on the website. Even if you're not interested in switching, just go check it out. Read yep. the website. Exactly. Fill out a form. Talk to somebody um, yeah. just to see if it's a right fit for you because they're not going to lead you in that wrong direction. Exactly. And spread it to someone who might benefit yeah. from Exactly. It. Yeah. Exactly. You might have somebody in your family who yeah. necessarily can't travel to a pharmacy mm-hmm. and we can deliver it to them for free. Yeah. Right. And so huge. That yeah. is huge. Yeah. Cause you know, those lines, you call me sometimes I mean, you're like, can you wait? And you know, yeah. Yeah. So. Go pick up. My order. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, so, oh, that, that's really amazing. Yep. Um, so yeah, that, that, that's it guys. Um, thank you for another episode, episode 48. 47, 48, 49, I can't even keep, knows. 48, <laughs> 48, 48, um, guys tap in with the STL bucket list show. Um, we really try to put out a good product each and every week, um, to support St. Louis, because when you support your community, um, you know, that's the only way to, to become greater. Uh, the gr- greater is the word of the day that we have to come up with a, co- a cool name the for the episode. The um, but thank you to Half Coast, Matt, cutting up a perfect episode. Um, you guys can listen to this um, on Spotify and Apple. You can also watch it on YouTube if you want to see the full version. Um, and then the Regional Arts Commission of St. Louis for being um, our presenting sponsor of the podcast, um, allowing us to continue to highlight new entrepreneurs, new people each and every week in St. Louis. We drop every Wednesday morning. Um, so guys, tap in with that. Today they rep St. Louis. Yeah. They rep St. Louis. They rep St. Louis.